What's going on, y'all? So Ooh, girl, let me hurry up, okay? Because y'all know I like to talk, especially when it's a show that I freaking enjoy, okay? Um, And, baby, let me tell you something. The neighbors were neighboring. They could still be neighboring right now, but we're going to try to get through this. But listen, Love After Lockup, our show is back. Life After Lockup for season three. This is episode one. You can't stop destiny. Baby, let me tell you something. This season looks like it's going to be good, okay? Because it's a whole bunch of motherfuckers on here, all right? But see, they just gave us a few of them. They gave us like five couples this time, you know? Um, and... Actually, they could have took a couple of these couples off because I really don't care about them. Chaz and Bronwyn, baby, who cares? Okay, who really cares? You know, and I ain't saying it like that. You know, like they're a bad couple because they really haven't done anything yet. You know, it's just that you can tell when a person is getting used or I don't even know if what I call it being used. Because I think all of them are being used, but is it intentional? All right, listen. We first see Bronwyn coming over there to her friend house or whatever. Hold on, y'all. Woo, this shit burning. I'm sorry, y'all. We see her coming over there to her friend house because her friend needs some stuff done, okay? She was like, you need to sand the wood and you need to put them carpets right there and put that nail right there. I said, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. What are we doing? Now, see, Brahma, I wasn't expecting that. She said, bitch, looks can be goddamn deceiving. I said, all right. She said, listen, before I went to jail, I was getting my license in construction, okay? I was getting uh, schooling for construction and all that shit. So, let's take these cabinets down. Let's sand them down. Let's put this nail up in here and let's prop it up here like that. Give me the goo gun. Give me the caulk. Give me the wrench. Give me all of that. I said, oh, shit. She came up in there with her little wife beater on and everything. I said, come on, bitch. You mean business. She she said, hell the fuck yeah, the job is a job, bitch, I need it. I said, all right, you know, she out here doing her. Mind you, she got her girlfriends there or whatever, you know, it was one of her friends that was actually giving her the work, so she can't, she ain't finna turn down shit, understandable, you just got out of jail, and it is what it is. They having a conversation, and I kind of feel bad for her, but then again, I really don't, because girl, you put yourself up in this situation, and ain't no way in hell I'm choosing a fucking man or woman over my child, okay? Because the last time we saw her, she was having this dilemma as to whether or not she was going to go out there to Kentucky, try to get paroled out there to Kentucky um, with uh, Chaz, because that's where he from, and um, <clears throat> you know, either do that or... Baby, I gotta take a pill. <sighs> like, my foot really hurt right now. Either that, um, what the fuck? I, all I did was pull the bandage off. I pulled it back, and that just, I don't know what the fuck they did. But anyway, I'm, 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 I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna see how I feel by the time that, uh, review, uh, over with. It'll probably calm down in a second. But anyway, so, you know, she gotta decide that. And I said, um, ain't nobody tell you to marry that man as soon as you got out, okay? First of all, knowing that your daughter was out here, whatever, I would have said we're going to have to hold off on this and I'm going to have to spend time with my daughter. I got to make up for lost time. I don't care if she's an adult. Baby, I have to make up for lost time because I really wasn't there for her like that. You had a whole literal ass breakdown, you know, talking about it. So, of course, you need to make up for lost times. That's what you need to do, you know? And one of the friends was like, do you really like him? Like, is he cute to you? She was like, I mean, she said, do you find him sexy or whatever? I mean, he cute. Like, he real decent. You know what I'm saying? It's just that he's not aggressive. And I'm sitting here like, you know what? Maybe that aggressive shit is what, that's what's been getting you up in trouble. You know, that's what's been getting you in trouble. Maybe this is another route that you should go so that you can be, you know, less prone to get in trouble or whatever. And, um, but the friend was just telling her, listen, you forcing yourself to be up in this situation. That's why you have all this conflict or whatever, because you really don't want to be with him because this is not the person that you used to being with. Okay. And I truly don't feel like she's attracted to him the way that he's attracted to her. Okay. I feel as though she's forcing herself. All right. And that is what it is, you know, and she's already got some mental things that's going on. Then we get over there to Chaz. He over there, um, in his band or whatever, and his bandmate talking to him like sir what's going on 
he was like, listen, so we trying to get uh, Kentucky, uh get her out here to Kentucky or whatever. That was like, so she's still out there? Hell yeah, unfortunately, you know. It was like, well, damn, did you get to bang, 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 ski, ski, ski? He said, no. They was like, wait a minute, so you was out there that whole time and you ain't get to... Nope. It was like, I mean, she got probation, she got curfew, she got this, she got that. No, Bronwyn just wasn't ready to do it with him. And I don't even feel like at this point, I do understand where Bronwyn is coming from when she's talking about, you know, she gained some weight back when she first started talk talking to Chaz or, you know, when she first got into jail, she was a lot, a lot thinner, you know, even though she still look, she look good. She for a Caucasian lady. I don't know why it took me down because somebody probably looked up like, girl, bitch, what? <laughs> I'm being the correct. <laughs> Boy, Caucasian lady, she look good. Okay, she look. I, let me, maybe because I like them thick. Okay, you could be a little small or whatever, but just a little bit. Like, see, it, let me tell you something. She talking about her size. And she she let me tell you something, Brown. You just ain't got with the right one. Okay, that's what it is. You ain't got with the right one. Obviously, the people that you been with, they just been with you because of your looks and because you look like a little Barbie. That's what you look like back in the day or whatever. And they um you know could do some things with you and all that shit. They appreciate that shit. But let me tell you something. You get with a real man or a woman or whoever the hell it is that you want to be with, baby. They will love you no matter what size you are. If they really about that life. Cause let me tell you something if you get with me and you a size 10 and then you go up to a size 24 bitch i don't care i my big ass can't complain first of all but i'm the type of person that you know when a woman starts gaining a little bit of weight even a dude too it's cute to me okay it's cute to me you know to a certain extent you know what i'm saying and I'm not that type of person that's going to, like, put them down. Like, obviously, either they're going through something or they just feel free. I feel free. They feel free enough to just go ahead and let themselves, not let themselves go, but to gain that happy weight or whatever. And who the fuck am I to say something about it? Bitch, if you feeling good about it, that's fine with me. Girl, we probably need to reinforce the bed, but we all to the good. <laughs> Go ahead and do you. But, bro, when I get it, because we all got body issue images. Y'all know I got them, okay? You know, somebody tried to come for me in my Beyonce review, uh, talking about my weight or whatever. And I was like, okay. It was so fucking random. It was so fucking random. And I haven't had one of those comments in years, okay? And I was like, it, it, and then they, the way they presented it, it was like it was just a regular observation. And I'm like, well, I, I, I know this. Oh, you weigh so-and-so. You look like you weigh so-and-so pants. Okay. What they got to do with the review? <laughs> what they got to do with the review? I ain't even respond to the shit. I just deleted it and blocked the person because I ain't never seen a person before. I said, that's one thing. You go try to come for somebody. I'd rather somebody come for me and be nasty with it right off the bat. And I know that's what it is instead of trying to be nice, nasty with it with a backhanded compliment and then make it seem like you calm and the tone is just real cool. No, bitch, don't do no shit like that because then that's really going to make me mad. But um, anyway, I was like, bro, I'm this cool, you know, and um, this girl was just like, you really don't you don't want him. OK, you don't want him like that. And you know it, girl. Chad's friend told him, um, you need to keep an eye on that Aaron dude. Cause he told him about the fact that, you know, he came up there to, uh, be at the, uh, at the, uh, the jail. Okay. And it was like, oh, okay. Hmm. Let's do that. So you need to keep an eye on him. Cause I don't trust that man. All right. And when she put, um, called him or whatever, he had called her. She was at work. He was like, I'm about to, uh, play with the band. You want me to call you and put you on FaceTime when I started to play? And she was like, yeah. And then, so when he did that, I mean, he was rocking out. Okay. I ain't even gonna lie, Chaz. You was doing your thing. You was doing your thing. Brown was standing there. I said, is she paying attention or is she doing other shit? She was doing both, okay? But, you know, she was like, oh, my God, look at him. Look at him. I said, who the fuck you talking to? Aaron right there behind her. I said, now, see, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. They going to tell her, 
uh, take him to the strip club. We saw the preview for that. They, he gonna be all up in the strip club, all up in the titties and shit. You know, she's scared to have sex with that man because she don't want to have sex with that man. She probably do got some trauma on her too, but, you know, she don't want to have sex with that man. I don't feel like she's sexually attracted to him. Okay? Moving on from that, another couple that I truly don't give a fuck about. Bitch, Taylor and Chance. Let me tell you something. Out of this goddamn thing, this little throuple, Taylor, Chance, and Bobby... I'm team Bobby, okay? Because Bobby was me this episode. Baby, and them little girls was me too, okay? Because the um, their little scene started off. The two little girls, they sitting at the table, right? With Chance and Taylor, all right? And then Chance was like, so what did you think of the proposal? The little girl said, mm, it was pretty boring. <laughs> Baby, I fell out because she said it with a straight face like what you want me to say you want me to be real right or do you want me to lie to your face it was boring as hell all right and so they get into a conversation about you know how it's gonna be and the fact that they haven't told bobby yet and chance is basically like i don't give a fuck okay at this point in time it is what it is ain't nothing gonna stop me whether she wanted me to get married to you or propose to you or not i was gonna propose anyway and she was like i understand that but i still gotta tell her you know and they going through some stuff let me tell you something miss girl i feel like you just you rebounded because you really want you somebody to take the place of your um, uh, ex-fiance that passed away. You know, and I ain't going to disrespect him because, you know, what happened to him was very much tragic. And I feel as though Bobby sees that too. Bobby, th that's your twin. Whether the, okay, y'all fraternal twins, all right? And if y'all don't know, because some of y'all don't know, fraternal twins mean that they don't look alike. They're not identical. Okay, so that's what that is, you know. But... <clears throat> Um, she was like, I'm gonna have to tell her. So she go back there. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Bobby was sitting down there folding up some clothes and acting like she was folding up some clothes. I said, Bobby, you weren't folding up no damn clothes. You just did that just to make it seem like you was doing something, like you weren't out there listening. But anyway, she said, hey, girl, how you doing? <laughs> so, Chance proposed to me yesterday, and I said yes. I mean, he had the girls and everything, and it was just really nice. And, you know, he had a carriage and all that, and the girls had signs or whatever. And you see the ring? <laughs> she was like, mm, it's cute. <laughs> it's just the way she said it. She was like, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> she tried to keep a straight face, but the 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 way the the voice came out in the, the if the voice had a face, the the the, the voice face would have been like this. That little shit. You really think that's what you deserve? That little cheap ass shit. I could tell right now that shit. That cracker box ass ring. That's what you gonna put yourself down to. Well, all right. But then when she started describing what happened, she was like, I mean, it was just like, imagine imagine what you would like to be um to be proposed to. That's just how it was. She was like, no, nah, because I wouldn't want to be proposed to. I said, damn, Bobby. Bobby was not impressed, okay? And I understand because she don't like that man. And her whole thing is, let me tell you something, he just went, she sees right through him. Because she was in jail before, and so therefore she know how this system works. And even if Chance is, let's say, trying to be good by Taylor, a lot of his ways, y'all just got to pay, pay close attention. Attention. Play, mm, pay close attention to him. Okay, look at the body language, look at his facial expressions, look at listen to the inflections in his voice, okay? I've come to realize and see this, and we've already called him manip uh, manipulative as fuck, right? And so he again can't even let them have that conversation between sisters, right? You already established the fact that you didn't came in and you didn't had started some stuff, and, and and that's not what you was intending. Yes, it was. All right, you already know Bobby don't give a fuck about you, and you can't let her sister have her time with her and let her know what's going on between y'all two and you gonna come in the door okay what y'all talking about y'all didn't hear talking about me because bobby had to tell her i think y'all you're moving too fucking fast because she said listen you know um brought up the whole situation about the the uh uh the baby daddy the ex fiance or whatever who passed away 
And if she's compensating for that, you know, and even Taylor said, you know, she still feel like a hole in her heart because of that or uh, like a piece of her has left because of that, you know. And I do feel like she's overcompensating trying to make it work with Chance because she just wants somebody in her life, you know. And that's just what it is. And it's fine to want somebody and want to move on or whatever, but you can't just move on to just some random motherfucker that just manipulative as fuck i mean he's 41 years old and he is not about to relinquish control okay the way he popped up into that room we're telling here talking about bobby said you <laughs> the fuck <laughs> i said bobby is just over it you know she was just like i'm not really here for it because y'all moving too goddamn fast and he was like i understand that we got into it you know what i'm saying but you know what i was thinking is once again here he goes what I was thinking is, you know, um, since the girls are uh, in a room with each other and it's all cramped, maybe I can just go ahead and um, build the garage, uh, a room in a garage and move you into it so that Sophie can have her own room. She said, no, because, bitch, I'm not going nowhere, and I see exactly what you're doing, okay? He was like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to make you go nowhere. She said, listen, first of all, I just moved in. You come up in here. We get into it. I leave. I'm just coming back. Now you're trying to push me away again. He's like, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm doing. That's not what I'm doing. And it was that smirk on his face, you know, when he was trying to convince her that everything's going to be okay. He was like, listen, I know that I kind of overstepped and I kind of messed up. But, you know, I'm going to make it so that you can, um, you know, come back on my side and you can like me. I said, first of all, she was never on your side. Okay? So we can all like each other. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the garage and I'm going to see if you like like it and if you don't like it i mean i'll put taylor out there i said excuse me sir i don't care if that was a joke i just didn't find it funny okay you was doing a little bit too much because it's truth behind a joke most time it's truth behind the jokes okay and then she was like girl i ain't going nowhere the fuck you talking about because bobby said he just want me to get out of there so that they can have the house to themselves so he can do whatever the fuck he want to do to her that's all that it is and did y'all see how he smiled after saying that real it was creepy he smiled and then walked out hanging out that door i said excuse me get them kids away from that man okay get get yourself away from that man taylor taylor you standing there and you sitting there and you got fear on your face or i don't know if it was fear i don't know if she was like concerned i don't know if she was scared to say something or she was just stuck it just didn't look good for somebody that just got proposed to you know i said get your ass out the situation it is not too late moving on from that taylor chaz who else was on this episode? Kevin and goddamn Tiffany, bitch. Let me tell you something. I truly don't care about this. All right? I truly don't care about this. Give me the other people. Give me the other people that actually held my interest. Because Kevin, I just feel like Kevin said the N-word in his spare time. Like, you know, he, he being careful not to say it, you know, on um camera or whatever. That's what it feel like. He just give me that fuck boy. We already know he's a fuck boy. He's been showing us that he's a fuck boy. He don't care that we know that he's a fuck boy. But see, Tiffany, girl, you stupid. And so I really don't see it for you at this moment. Because, mama, you left that man. You got your own roommate. Okay? You went, you got, your, you, you got a job at the restaurant, you know? And so to oblige him and to keep him in check, she finna go along with trying to get a girlfriend for them. She, when they went to that restaurant, she said, basically, I know that you'll be fucking around or whatever. So it is what it is. So maybe if I get a girlfriend for us or whatever, at least I know that that's who you with. And I ain't got to go search. I said, what? To keep him in check? Baby, if you got to do all that to keep a man, um, to make sure that he won't stray or whatever... I think it's time to let that shit go and go to somebody who actually want to be in the relationship with you and only you, okay? I said, first of all, I just don't see the appeal in Kevin. What is it, his eyes? He's short? His body is average? Who am I to talk about bodies? But I'm just saying, like, it ain't like he like this cock diesel type dude or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And he's rolling in a dough and, you know, he's just the perfect specimen now, Okay, and I get that, you know, people average or whatever, but for him to be doing all this shit, for him to be doing all this shit, I just said, girl, I don't see it. Man, he got the ego of a tall man. You look like you about five foot four. <laughs> doing all this. Okay, and the whole time, 
he getting text messages from Kayla, bitch. Kayla. Girl, that's the only part I want to see. Because Kayla finna come through and wreck shop. Okay? Kayla finna come through and wreck shop. Them motherfuckers sit down there actually getting on Tinder together. Let me tell you something. I used to be on a dating app, right? And the one thing I couldn't stand, especially when, um, you know, you go to the lesbian part of it or whatever, and you see a profile and it'd be a pretty girl or whatever, that's somebody that kind of fits your type or whatever that you're looking for. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, you scroll into the pictures and then it's her with some dude and then kind of find out that's her man because they looking for, um, you know, they looking for people for each other, a, a, a third. I don't want to be a girlfriend. I don't want to be y'all girlfriend, okay? You know, I don't want to fuck your man. I don't want your man to watch or whatever. So that's exactly what they did. Tiffany and Kev. I see a child on Tinder and they swiping right, swiping left. You want to do a ginger? You want to do this? Let me ask y'all something. To my redhead people that watch this, do y'all get offended? Is it offensive to y'all when people call y'all ginger, ginger or whatever? I've always wanted to know that, okay? Because it's so widely acceptable. I just want to know that you get offended by that. Because maybe, just maybe, I might get offended like, damn, bitch, redhead. Ugh, okay, call me that, you know? But then, who who knows? But um, that was going on, and then Kayla kept on texting. They wake up, she texting in the morning. <laughs> Kayla sent him a whole bunch of texts and pictures of them together and was like, what the fuck you doing on goddamn Tinder? You fucking lying with you and your fucking bitch, okay? Fuck both of you hoes. I said, excuse me, Kayla. Now, what is going on in here? I thought y'all was over and done with. Even though I already know that you don't know that that means that you're over and done with. Basically, he was lying to her. Now, see, Kevin, I hope she beat your ass, okay? Because you shouldn't be playing this girl. First of all, you already know that something is not right up in the head with her, okay? Now, I told y'all, I like crazy. Just a little psychotic. Uh, mm -mm, let me take that back. Just a little crazy, okay? I don't want to be psychotic. Just a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's a little sexy. You know, it's kind of like a turn on. But the shit that Kayla is doing, that is not sexy. That is, I'm scared for my life, okay? Because it's escalating, you know what I'm saying? And then he's playing into it. You know, he's contributing to the way that she's acting. Because 9 out of 10, she's acting like this because he won't fully let her go. Because he keeps on stringing her alone. So, therefore, she keeps on thinking that she has a chance to actually be his wife woman his main woman and it won't happen he's gonna be ping pong between her and tiffany and i said if you would have played your cards right you kind of could have had both of them at the same time y'all could have been a thruple but kayla probably would have beat tiffany ass all because he lied to her he lied to her and told her that you know they weren't together no more she was like so what the fuck you up on tinder for i seen you and your bitch on tinder he was like what on tinder i don't know what you're talking about she said, don't you even fucking lie. I saw the profile on Tinder. No, nah, that wasn't me because I ain't on Tinder. I have to give it to him in this moment, though. Because when I tell you he kept a straight face, the voice didn't inflect or anything to show any type of... I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Like, lying. You can tell when a person is truly lying. I said, uh-uh, you did this multiple times because you too good at this. I mean, then flinching anything. I said, that girl is not stupid, all right? That girl is not stupid. Now, when she come over there and she whoop your ass and then try to whoop Tiffany ass just because of you, then it's going to be something. I said, girl, let that shit go. That bed don't respect you. Have some more self-esteem about yourself. And then speaking of Tiffany, this motherfucker gonna give her the key to the car, uh, to the house. Talk about so you can come and go. I said, Mike, do you think that's a Kevin? Do you think that's a good idea? Given the fact that um, you can't keep your hands to yourself and your dick in your pants. Okay, and then you know you got Kayla still out here on the loose. You know. Um, so I guess you're not going to be fucking bitches up in your house. She's probably going to be going to their house or whatever. And so she was trying to make breakfast and he left, you know, and that's when she, he had the conversation with, uh, Kayla on the phone. She, Tiffany going to the be bedroom. She looking in the, um, I don't know what she was looking for, but she was in the underwear drawer and she found some pennies. She found some pennies that wasn't hers. She was like, what the fuck? I said, get the fuck out. <laughs> All that would have took me, baby, if I would have lasted this long them keys back and I would have left. But of course, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to stay. I said, is the dick really that good? Because when they was trying to get it in, 
earlier in the episode and they showed them getting hot and ready and all that stuff you know i was just like i don't get it and it's not because i'm gay it's just i don't get it <laughs> I don't get it. I just don't see what they see up in Kevin. I mean, it is what it is. Maybe it just ain't for me. Okay. Maybe it just ain't for me. That's just all I can say. Move it on from that. Um, check, girl, hold on. Okay. That's what it is. Anyway, moving on from that. And let me just get this part out. <laughs> Brittany and Marcelino, I honestly thought that I didn't want to see it, but I kind of do. Because when I saw the preview, and I apologize for the pause. When I saw the preview, because I had to get my thoughts together. When I saw the preview, girl, let me tell you something. I was like, oh my God, Brittany and Marcelino back on the cast. Oh my God, is this like a career goal for them? This is a career for them, okay? You know, they get their contract renewed each and every time. Are they locked in for five seasons? Is that what it is? You know, and then they get it renewed after five seasons or whatever. Because, bitch, they come back just about every episode of Love at the Lockup, Life at the Lockup. And I'm like, y'all one of the most successful ones that's on here, okay? And I'm sitting here like, damn, can we get some other couples that we rarely see, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck, what's going on with, well, remember, the what was the black boy? from Compton or whatever who married the white girl from the um suburbs can we get who got pregnant in? can we get them can we get them I want to see what's going on with them did he go back to jail or whatever like I need an update bitch give us an update on the peoples you know girl I said Marcelina why y'all on here y'all ain't struggling what's going on they said bitch we gonna be in for a time I said oh oh okay what well, what happened baby Last season on Love After Lockup or Love During Lockup, whichever one we, mm, Life After Lockup, whichever one you want to call it, baby, what wound up happening is, ever since Britney got out of jail, right, <clears throat> ever since Britney got out of jail, she had a little thing for her friend Amanda, right, because that was a little girlfriend back in the day, and they just became good, good girlfriends, nah, not good, good, click, click girlfriends, but good, good girlfriends, but see, Britney still been wanting to fuck that bitch again, okay? She just been wanting to get at them cheeks, okay? I said, oh, I understand, you know, you can't put aside what you really like. You know, I felt like you were settling. At that moment, it felt like she was settling for Marcelino. And I felt like she really just wanted to be with Amanda. And it just didn't happen because Amanda had moved on. But then Marcelino came to the picture and then Amanda was trying to get Brittany back. And it just wasn't going to happen. But now all of a sudden, on the last season, Marcelino and Brittany... Um, Brittany convinced Marcelino to have a threesome with Amanda. I said, oh my God, what is going on? So a few months later after that, it done fucked up the goddamn relationship even more, okay? Now see, back then, they were struggling how to get, you know, reconnected and have me time because they got three goddamn kids, okay? It was just a lot of goddamn shit that's going on in the house. Now, it's the fact that you done fucked around with this girl, okay? I said, see, this is the one thing you don't do. If you're going to do a threesome, don't do it with somebody that you know. All right, don't do it with somebody close to home, okay? That's just not, mm -mm, that's just never a good look. Somebody is, somebody's going to get hurt, okay? And mostly it's the person that winds up putting the threesome together, Brittany, you know? Um, So she was like, ever since that threesome happened, he's just been really disconnected. You know, it's almost like he not putting any effort into the relationship. He talking to me different. And he was talking to her a little bit disrespectful. I said, Marcelino, I ain't seen this side of you since season one. And I just don't know how I feel about it. Okay, what is going on, sir? I know we getting older. You know, we getting tired and kids is just running you ragged or whatever. Brittany out here working. Obviously, she didn't got her real estate license because she about to go show a house with somebody. I said, all right, Brittany, you a little success story. Okay, you better do your thing. You know, there is life after lockup. Okay, she said, and I am proof of it. You know, she could be the spokeswoman for it. I was like, that's cute. That's cute. That's cute. And so at that moment, you know, he was like, when she came down there to go do the clients, uh, to get ready to go, he was like, so we're going to switch him out at certain, certain, certain times. She was like, yeah, cool. But here's the thing. 
he talking about the lack of love or whatever it is. And, you know, he up there texting somebody else. They blurred the, uh, the name out. But we just saw the text of the person that texted him was like, hey, how you doing? And she, he was like, I'm good or whatever the fuck it was. Okay. I said, oh, I want to see the other text. I'm pretty sure I think I saw a heart up in there. But anyway, moving on from that, Brittany is up there showing a client a house, right? It was look like a husband and wife with this with her partner, okay? They having a good time. Brittany is doing what she had to do. Seems very personable. Everybody seems to be cool. And it was going smooth. Next thing you know, we see Marcelino putting the kids up in the car. Putting the kids up in the car, right? And he pulls up and he calls her. And she said, Oh my God, can you excuse me one second? I just gotta take this right quick. Family emergency. I was like, okay, cool. So she go outside. This motherfucker brought them kids there and said, it's time to switch. Okay? Now, the way that he was already talking about it, it's time to switch and shit, it was almost as if y'all was separated and you just dropping the kids off and it's your time with the kid. I ain't like the way they sounded like that. Okay? Because I was like, is this foreshadowing to what's going to come in the future? You know? Um, I'm rooting for them to stay together, but I just didn't want to see it. But at this moment, Marcelino, you would have got your ass whooped, okay? Because I would have slapped the fuck out of you. Because what you're not going to do is interrupt my job like this and drop them kids off and just pull off in the other car and just leave. And going to say something, I got plans too, okay? I said, nigga, you couldn't hold off a good five minutes. She was almost through showing the damn house and you couldn't wait until the clients left. I said, that is so freaking rude. That is rude. And that's just really how it be sometimes when, you know, men are used to being the breadwinner and then all of a sudden your woman is out here doing what she got to do because he did say being a stay-at-home father is hard. I said, well, if you a stay-at-home father, bitch, what is it? What plans you got to do? I know you got, you know, shit, but you could have, you could have pushed it back a couple of minutes. You could have had more respect for your wife, okay, and her job. You literally just let them kids there like a deadbeat daddy. All right, I just I picked him up and I got some cheeseburger and I'm dropping them off here. Take them. That's what he did. That's what he did. I said, oh my goodness, this is so messed up. I said, you know, Brittany getting reprimanded for for that type of something. The, 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 the partner saying this cannot happen again. And it was like, I know, I know, I know. And I just like, oh my God, Marcelino, bitch, you you put a nasty taste back in my mouth. Then see, I was coming over to your side for a little bit. Because there was a time I couldn't stand his ass. But now you didn't put me back over on, on, on the opposite side. Now I still can't stand you because that was really fucked up what you did. Now had she did some shit like that to you, oh, she'd probably be all type of bitches in the book, right? Yeah, that double standard ass shit, you know. I said, damn, Brittany, I hope you cuss his ass out later, okay? Meanwhile, let's get to Lindsay. Remember Lindsay? Lindsay was down there in Mississippi with Scott. Scotland with the fucked up mouth, okay? Girl, the swollen lip. The swollen lip. I want to know how did he get that fixed, okay? Because that could have been something going on. Like, he could have been, had a little allergic reaction that just never went away or like a, a little tumor or something. I don't know. I don't know. A lesion. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, she getting out of jail. I said, damn, bitch, I forgot you was in jail because the way she got back up in jail... <laughs> Her friend Blaine picked her up, okay? She said, we ain't fuck around or whatever because he suggested, because, you know, she had to ask, can, you know, she sleep up in his, uh, on his couch or whatever. He was like, you can sleep up in my room. And she was like, no, I want to sleep on the couch, okay? She said, you know, he used to be, uh, uh, he used to work for her. But then she said he used to buy drugs from her. And if you, especially a woman, you know, in this game and you sleeping with the people that you selling to or whatever, now that you ain't going to get no respect like that. So, you know, she ain't do that. I said, okay, understandable. And so, you know, they've been down for a minute. Okay. And then, you know, she's like, her mama probably pissed off at her. That's why she didn't come pick her up because she tired of her going in and out of the goddamn prison. But then we found out that now nah. she was like, oh my God, I got a boyfriend. <laughs> Somebody said me. Deontay's goddamn page before the show came on and before the preview even came out. And they was all hugged up and shit. You very much like a couple. And I said, huh? How the hell this happened? Is it real? Girl, I feel like it is. <laughs> Only because when they did that little blurb in the middle of, you know, when they do that little one minute uh, they do the commercial break, then they bring that one minute scene back, and then they do another commercial break before they get to the, back to the regular program. He was, he has studied Lindsay, her expressions, the way that she moves her head, the inflections of her voice, you know, 
memorized some of the things that she said on her season to Scott. I said, oh my God, what is this? So y'all really together, together. Baby, the producer was like, this your third inmate? He was like, yeah, you know, let me tell you something. When I, she totally different from Nicole because, you know, she just want me for me. And first of all, she came after me, you know what I'm saying? Got up into my inbox or whatever, said, hey, you look cute and all that stuff. We get to talking and woo, 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 whoop de woo And it was on from there. Nicole, on the other hand, she wanted so much shit from me. And, 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 and Lindsay don't want nothing from me. She just want me, you know what I'm saying? You know, when I was with Nicole, I was always like this. But when I'm with Lindsay, I'm just like this. I said, sir, stop it. Stop it, because soon you're going to be just like this with Lindsay, okay? And how is Nicole and um, what the girl Tina doing, okay? Are they still together? Tina still with us? Her liver, okay? I just had a question I really want to know. You know, I want some update. I wish they would do it. Where are they now? Damn. Anyway, um... So she telling her friend, Lindsay Wines was telling her friend, you know, she was like, Can I see your phone so I can call him? <laughs> she get on the phone. He was, she was like, Hey baby. And he was like, Babe, what's going on? Who 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 phone you on? I'm on my friend's phone. But I just got out. You just got out. Yeah, they just came up to me, talked about something, you know what, you finna get out. And it was like not even twenty two hours ago, or whatever. So I ain't questioning, I just got out. It was like what you need to do, you need to come on down here, cause I guess he's in Virginia, she's in Mississippi. He was like, Listen, I'm gonna finish work, but I'm damn sure ain't nothing gonna stop me from being there in the morning. I said, All right, now see, let me tell you something. That's I don't listen, I don't care for this situation, but if we talking and we long distance or whatever, and you wanna say and we get to that point that you know, oh when we gonna see each other baby you want me to come right now yeah i want you to come right now hop on that goddamn plane to be there the next day i'll be like all right <laughs> you know it ain't nothing to take a flight bitch but then again it's day and age you don't know if you're gonna get a pilot you don't know if you're gonna get a good ticket and you don't know if you're gonna get a seat okay hell i mean times are hard all right for everybody but i was like damn Deontay, he probably gonna drive down there too i said all right you ready to get that huh that milk of magnesia. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Deontay ain't never gonna be with a black woman. And that's okay. That's okay. Lindsay was like, because I already told y'all, it's just some men that you can look at. Or no, not even gonna say men. It's just, and this is no shade. And I don't have a problem with it just as long as you're not disrespectful to your own, you know, community, your own culture, your own race. Like, because, you know, some of y'all do be doing that. But, you know, <laughs> It's just some people, you look at them and you can just tell, I can't see you with somebody within your own, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I see you with somebody else, okay? I just I just can't see it. Lizzie was like, I mean, he fine, he got sex appeal, and he know he got sex appeal. I said, for real, girl, for real, girl, defend it. And then you find it and you show it to me, okay? Now... If he wasn't so goofy, I ain't gonna say he got sex appeal because everybody don't have sex appeal, okay? You 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 just gotta have it, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not gonna say De Deontay is a bad looking guy. He's not, okay? Maybe I don't I don't even wanna say that. I, I sometimes don't think he all the way there. <laughs> I said it, okay? I just don't think he all the way there sometimes. And that's how come these girls be taking advantage of him. But, um, yeah. So, that was that. He almost was about to cuss her out for having, um, being in the car with Blaine. Okay? Also, your friend came in there. He a, he a dude. He a dude. I got a whole bunch of guy friends, okay? Like, calm down. I said, oh, all right. You know? So, then, after that, she about to go on a job interview. Mind you, I was like, all right. It's only eight hours after, um, being out. And she was like, listen, I'm going to go on this job interview. I'm trying to go ahead and get a job, something or whatever, so I could get into a routine. Because she tired of being uh, locked up. Because when Blaine asked her, you know, so what happened to Scott? She said, you want to know what happened to that motherfucker? Okay, bitch, let me tell you something. Scott is my type of petty, but then he took it a little bit too far. Okay? She said the last time I seen Tim was when I was scra I scraped the word fuck you up in, my, uh, in his desk, right? So he called the cops on her. I said, now, Scott... Now, Scott, why would you? <laughs> Scott wanted revenge, okay? He said, what you're not going to do is destroy my property and break my heart and think you're going to be a free woman. No, the fuck you're not. You're going to get your ass locked the fuck back up, and I'm going to be the one to do it. Baby, he called the cops on her talking about something. He, she messed up um $1,500,000 
of uh, merchandise and, and furniture and shit, you know, and uh, was a harm to him and all that stuff. So she wound up getting arrested, okay? Uh, she wind up getting locked up. She said, bitch, while I was in jail, this motherfucker was texting, calling her, taunting him, uh, taunting her, whatever. Talk about some ha, ha, ha. I said, now, Sky, you got too much goddamn time on your hand, okay? And you a little scorn because you thought you had a little baddie, a little young tender on your arm. And she and she didn't turn out to be what you wanted, okay? Or or what you thought, okay? You got played in the process. That's just all that it is, you know? And so she was like, this motherfucker will send me a penny through MoneyGram every week. And do you know how much it costs? It costs $10 to send a goddamn penny. I said, it's in, no, it costs $10 to send a MoneyGram. So you'll spend $10 to send her a penny. Each and every time you sent her a penny. Now, Scott. Scott. No, sir. No, sir. Mm -mm. She said, fuck that man. Okay, so she was in jail for the past 16 months or whatever. She was in there for, like, possession of some drugs. You know, she got four felonies on her account. How we know this? Because she told us. Because why they in the parking lot waiting to go do the interview? A friend of theirs, or I should say an associate, because that, that's what they called it, an associate of hers, called her and said that another associate is in jail. Um, He got pulled over, and he's in jail. Did he have any drugs in the car? No. He had to give his name. This is a no-name given state or something like that, whatever. And was like, damn. So the bill is $789. She said, you know what, I still got some money or whatever from when, um, you know, she used to be a drug, drug dealer in the streets and everything. I said, for real, she pulled out them hundreds. I said, oh, shit, bitch. Hmm. She said, I gave my money to Blaine so he can, um, you know, keep an eye on it. I said, and he ain't touched it this whole time? I like Blaine. I like that character. Okay? You know? Cool. But it was telephone tree. It went to telephone tree because they was trying to find somebody that can go take this money and bail him out because she can't go up there because she's a felon and she has warrants. She has out-of-state warrants, okay? Mind you, she just got out of jail and she still has warrants on her and she still has pending felonies on her and then Blaine he got you know some shit on him too that he gotta pay or whatever I said oh my goodness everybody was trying to be I don't know I don't know you got somebody that got a license you know somebody with a license you know this I said this is crazy up until she was like fuck this shit that's my boy I ain't finna leave him up in there take me to the police I said bitch get your ass in there and do the interview I get that loyalty shit, but you know what? How, how anybody gonna benefit if your ass go back to jail? I just said, uh-uh, uh-uh. I said, Lindsay, we already started. Wrong road, Lindsay. Wrong road, okay? And talk about wrong road. <clears throat> Baby, they done brought back Sean and Sarah. Sean and Sarah. I don't like that bitch. I think she disrespectful as hell, and she needs to know her place. Granted, I get it. You about to be this man's wife, okay? Because they going, you know, looking at venues or whatever, uh, finalizing stuff. Got to go finalize her wedding dress and all that shit or whatever. You know, why they looking at the venue? You know, she said she five months pregnant, okay? Why they looking at the venue and everything? She keep on getting a text message or a phone call, and she was like, who that texting you? Who that hitting you up? And, um... He was like, it's nobody. She said, I bet it's Kelly. And she just was like, I just don't understand why she keep on calling you or whatever. Because at the end of the day, I understand that that's your um, baby mama. But I am about to be your wife. And I also have your child. Okay? That's what's going on. And she needs to know her place. And I am so tired of her. Baby, the way that she was talking about Miss Kelly. Okay? Queen Kelly, you don't do shit like that. Okay? Because at the end of the day, you have no self-respect about yourself. You know? Wait until you get into the situation that Kelly is in. And you don't, you feel in comparison to her. Then I get it, you about to get, be his wife or whatever. So therefore you should be the, like the first woman in his life or whatever. But no, they still got young kids together. So therefore they're going to be in constant communication. But see, Sean had me fucked up when, um, the people asked how many people come to the, um, wedding. And he was like, you know, my older son, my oldest son, my sister and my nephew and some friends and family, I guess from, um, her side. And he was like, I wanted the other kids to come, but they couldn't. Why couldn't they come? You know, because school and other stuff, and probably because Kelly didn't want them to. Okay, and, and, 
you know, you know that daughter wasn't coming. She can't stand your ass, okay? And then come to find out, he gonna say, I haven't been able to see my kids in the past year or so, you know, because Kelly won't let them come down. I said, well, if Kelly won't let them come down, and 9 out of 10, it's because they don't want to come down, and I don't even feel like that's the excuse that she won't let them come down. Um, you get your ass on a goddamn plane and you go down there and you go uh, visit your kids up in California. That's what you better fucking do. All these goddamn excuses that you making to not see your kid. Ain't no way in hell I'm finna go a year when I had the means. You up here buying all this shit for this woman and all these other women that you're doing. And you can't get a plane ticket and, and, and take a couple of weeks or whatever out your goddamn life and, and, and go visit your kids. You can't go down there once a month. You can't do that. A weekend or some shit. Every other weekend or something like that. Bitch, I know... T look, girl, sir, sir, we seen all the money that you done spent on these bitches. And you ain't barely spent shit on your kids. And you ain't seen them. I said, girl... And then, Sarah, I just want you to shut up. Okay? I really just want you to shut up. I was so here for Sarah Mama when they was going dress shopping. And she was like, I don't trust that man. I don't trust that man. Because, first of all... Um, you know, he was fucking around with another bitch while she was with him, while she was with him. And that's what everybody don't understand, bitch. How is it? And see, that's what really makes me mad. You find out that he was talking to somebody and engaged to somebody before you, during you, and you still going to get with him. Baby, that would have been enough for me to say deuces. I ain't that desperate because you ain't even that cute, okay? He got that rat-looking mouth, you know, that little rodent-looking mouth or whatever. I'm like, what the fuck is going on with that lip? It's always bothered me. And I said, y'all find that appealing? You know, he gives me serial killer vibes. He, the way he just be standing there, the way his lip tip um, tucks under, whatever, that top lip, it's just serial killer vibes, okay? And he does not put his foot down. He's just, he let people walk over him. So he going over there to go see his sister, his nephew. He hasn't seen his sister in a minute. He hasn't seen his son in a minute because he's been in the army. So it's been like two years, but the relationship been strained. And, um, you know, he was like, first of all, they didn't even know that she was pregnant. Girl... He asked the son, so how y'all feel about, how you feel about this? And he was like, I mean, y'all adults. That's all I can say. Y'all grown adults. Y'all know what y'all doing. Do what you do. Okay. You know, he said Sarah seemed nice or whatever. That shit was awkward as hell. You know, um, I was with Sarah, uh, with, with Sean's sister was like, so, um, uh, let me ask this question. Did you get pregnant just to get married to him? And she was like, no. <laughs> Basically, did you trap him? Is that why y'all getting married? He was like, no. I had found out that I was pregnant. And before I even told him, he was already proposing. And then I told him afterwards. And so, she was like, oh, oh, okay. That was the most awkward ass shit, right? And so, when the kid... Well, Brandon went to go... Um, That was the son's name. Brandon went uh, 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 tuck shopping with uh, his daddy. And... <laughs> <laughs> the guy asked, is everything perfect or whatever? He was like, I mean, this is perfect as it's going to be for a shotgun wedding. <laughs> Sean said, don't call it a shotgun wedding. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> he was like, listen, I love her. I've been with her. And everything's going to work out fine. He said, I mean, it might as well be. Because, listen, you ain't even tell us who this bitch was. Because the last time I heard her, I thought her name was Destiny. I said, now, why you bring this bitch up? Why you bring this bitch up? Because sure enough, as if on cue, his phone starts ringing. His phone starts ringing. He goes outside. He answers the phone. She was like, hey, because he told her, um, told Brandon. He was like, where's she at anyway? You know, she got sent back to jail. She had a warrant for taking off her ankle bracelet or whatever and all that shit or whatever. So it was like 16 months that she had to do. She could be out. She couldn't. I don't know. My whole thing gets this. Why you ain't got that bitch uh, number blocked? Why you ain't got all of her information erased and erased in her number block? Okay. Why is she able to get in contact with you? You know, that lady called him and said, I'm out. You ain't check on me and you finna take care of me. You finna give me money because I feel like you owe it to me. I said, bitch, first of all, we broke up. I don't owe you shit. I gave you enough, first of all. You ain't never give me anything. You took and took and took from me. Then you got with another man that I think she either got married to or whatever. And um, now you talk about some I owe you money and you want me to take care of you. Fuck you. So um, Sean hung up on her, right? And at the end, she gonna say, I'm pregnant. I said, I know you're not trying to say that that's Sean's baby. 
I know you're not trying to say that that's Sean's baby. After you was with Odu, after Sean, and whoever else you probably was with during him. Girl, come on now. Come on now. She was like, yeah, I'm finna get masked. I said, mm-mm, mm-mm. She said, bitch, the kind ain't over with, okay? You ain't gonna get rid of my ass. I said, oh, no, Miss Destiny, you gotta go. But then again, bring it on so that Sarah, because she finna start fucking shit up. I'm, I got a feeling she gonna interrupt the wedding. I do. I do. And I want to see that. I just want to see that. But anyway, I said over Sean of all people. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. That's life after lockup, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. And I will see you guys later. Enjoy your weekend, okay? And be safe. Peace.